So in this video, we will learn how to create the cross tabulation if we have the quantitative variables. So we before you watch this video, you should first watch the uh, cross tabulation for categorical variable, because we will skip some basic knowledge about cross tabulation. So in this uh, example, we are using two uh, variables, uh, ACT score and GPA scores. So we have two variables. And uh, knowing the information of these two variables, and we want to create a cross tabulation to know the relationship between ACT score and GPA. And uh, so try to remember, please try to remember what we've learned in the categorical variable. So in order to create a cross tabulation, we need to have different classes. So for a cla categorical uh, variable, we already have the classes different uh, categories. However, for our quantitative variable, we need to first to decide our categories. So let's see for GPA score. And as we know, the lowest GPA score is zero and highest is four. And which means we can, what we can do is we can choose the class width as one. And so we can uh, evenly choose separate, uh, decide the four different classes, 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4. So that's how we define the, the classes for GPA. And, uh, for ACT score, and we will do it later. So similar as our categorical variable, so we first find the Insert tab. And after you click Insert tab, please click the Pivot table. And now we will see this dialog again, this window again, create a pivot table. So we need to first to select our uh, table range or data range. So first you click this little icon and se select your data set. Please make sure you also uh, you will include the uh, label for each column. So from A1 to B121. And then click this little icon again to go back to your original window. And then now we will put our uh, cross tabulation in this worksheet, so we don't need to change the location. And now we click OK. So if you are using the latest uh, Microsoft Excel, and you should see this area on the right right side uh, right side of your Excel spreadsheet called the pivot table field. So similar as the uh, cross tabulation for categorical variable, we have two variables here, showing here on the upper area. So the upper area always show us how many variables we have in this data set. And the bottom area here is how we filling to uh, filling the four different er three different areas to create our cross tabulation. So first, let's uh, drag one of the variable to either column or row. So let's see, let's drag the ACD score to our columns. And then if you roll it up a little bit, and uh, now you will find there is one area, and uh, we can see the column label 14, 15, 16, 18. So here we created the, um, the, the table uh, label for the uh, column labels. And then now uh, we still need our GPA to fill in our, col the, uh, our row labels. So then we drag GPA to rows. So now we created um, the frame for our cross tabulation. However, we cannot see the value because if you see this area, the value area is still empty. So what we want to do is we can draw one of these variables to this area, not both, just one of it, either ACT score or GPA. So let's drag ACT score to values area. So now we created this table and it's huge. So what's happened here? So before we figure out what happened, let's change the labels for row and the column. And for row labels, we know actually it's for GPA. So we want to change the label for the rows. And now after you choose this cell, Z25, and then go back to this area, type GPA. And then we change the column labels. So we know here is actually the ACT score and uh, choose the column label and change the label as ACT. So now we can see, oh, what's happened here is uh, actually the Excel treat each observation as one class. So that's why we have a huge cross tabulation. So what we will do now is we will uh, try to group them 
and into different classes. So as I mentioned for GPA, we starting from 0, and 0 to 1 is our first class, 1 to 2 is our second class, 2 to 3 is our uh, uh, th third class, 3 to 4 is our last class. In order to group it, and uh, choose one of the value for GPA, so for instance, let's choose 0.5. And after you choose point of five, point 0.5, and right-click your mouth, right-click your mouth, and then you will see these options. So choose group. So after you choose group, and you will find you have the starting at checked point 0.5. So where does this point 0.5 come from? Actually, this is the smallest value in our data set for GBA. So we can uncheck it and change it to 0. Because as I said, we set the classes from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and the ending at 4. So the 4 is the highest GPA. Also, we have the observation 4 in our, in our data set. And the by 1, so what the by 1 means? So by 1 actually is our class width. So the class width is 1. That's what we want. So then we can click OK. So now we you will find our classes for GPA shrink from a huge rows to only four rows. Zero to one, one to two, two to three, three to four. So that is four classes for GPA. And then how about ACT score? So the ACT score is smallest is uh, 14 and the highest is 35. And so what we will do is we will group them. So we'll choose one of the of a value for ACT score, and let's say 14, and right-click your mouse, and again you will see this op uh, display, and choose the option called Group. So the starting at 14 and any at 35. So let's see, we found a close it uh, nice number 10 as our uh, starting point, and the class ending at 35, and by let's see our class width is 5 and click OK. So now we finish grouping our column and rows. And so for the rows, we have four rows, so four classes for GPA. And for column, we have one, two, three, four, five. Five column for ACT score, so which means we have five classes for ACT. So now the question is, if you look at um, the interaction between two grand total 2967, so does that mean we have 2,967 observation? If you roll down to check it out, so you will see, no, actually, we don't have so many. We only have 120 observation. So what's happened here is when we do the cross-tabulation, by default, Excel will count the value of the cell instead of try to count how many number belonging to that, how many observation belonging to that class. So then what you need to do is choose any one of the observation and then right click the mouse. And again, instead of you can see the group, we just move down a little bit. So there is one option called summarize values by, so it shouldn't be sum, it should be count. So after you change to count, and then you can find this, the interaction between two grand total is 120. So that is our sample size. So now you also will see some blank area. So what are those numbers? So if you see the blank cell, actually, you, actually you should realize they are zero. So no observation belonging to student got GPA from zero to one, and ACT screw up right between 10 to 14. So now, uh, the next question you want to ask me, so for 0 to 1, 1 to 2, so where are they blowing to? For instance, if the student got the GPA as 1 or 2, so which class should he belongs to? So in order to see, uh, the, uh, to, cl to clarify the boundary of, the, uh, of each class, so let's focus on the student who got the GPA from 1 to 2. And we have one stu so one to two. Let's count how many students is between one to two. So the first we saw one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, and uh, where is 
so we have observation here two so it's five so which means here we see five so what does this telling you is we see one in two places however in Excel by default they only consider the upper boundary is closed so in this case the is zero to one and one is not including the second classes but two is included and the two to three two is not included but the three is included three to four three is not included four is included so that's how here works and however for ACT score definitely the class width is five so it's for the first class include the class 10 uh, observation 10 11 12 13 and 14 totally five and second class 15 16 17 18 19 so the Excel is very smart to figure out when they will include the boundary and when they will not so this is one example to showing you how to create a cross tabulation for our quantitative variable